This week, reporter Trey Abasolo will be covering the state fair. Andrew Burgos will be giving us details about WePack. Sean Neptune will be telling us about next week's homecoming themes. And on Gabe's Gabe Recap, Gabe Daniel will be giving us information about the sports that went down last week. This week, we will also introduce two new segments, Wildcat Challenges, where Reagan Williams will challenge students to do different challenges each week, and Caleb's Kitchen, where Caleb Perkins will be cooking up information for this new segment. I'm Shane Fonsel. And I'm Emma Seville. And KCAT News starts right now. Our high school band is a major part of the school, consisting of many talented students ranging from drums to bass guitars. They will be performing at WePAC in Ashland, Kansas. Andrew Burgos is telling us about band getting ready for this huge event. Thanks, Jayton. You will always hear the Mulvane High School Band under the direction of Mr. Clory Claker at football games and basketball games. Mr. Claker wanted this job because he loved the tradition here at Mulvane High School, whether it be at a pep rally or just at a football game. And, and when you have a good tradition, it brings people back to this community and they want to come back and raise their families and teach in this district. And, and for me, that, that was a big selling point in coming here and, and wanting to be a part of this and be a Mulvane Wildcat. The MHS band was selected to play at WePAC, which stands for the towns of Wilmore, Inglewood, Protection, Ashland, and Coldwater, Kansas. And more recently has expanded to include all of Clark County, where they have made a pact to raise money for cancer by having a cancer awareness basketball game that raises money for women's cancer treatments in rural Kansas areas, where they don't have the opportunity to come to Wichita like we do. Mr. Claker is super excited for this opportunity, and it is a huge honor. I'm most excited for WePAC for the fact that, for one, I'm, I taught out in western Kansas for a long time, so I feel like it's coming around full, full circle for me as a teacher, being able to have my Mulvane band here get recognized by them out there and to invite us to come out and do what most college bands do is pretty exciting. And uh, just being able to watch the drumline and band perform in, a, in an arena that's not always... Um, what they're used to. It gets them out of the box and gets them to experience some things that maybe they, do, they don't get to normally. It's a huge honor to be asked to play for WePAC. Like I said, it's um, mostly college bands that come out and play. We've got WNBA players that come out and, and uh, play for this cause, uh, Harlem Globetrotters, um, NCAA basketball players, and they have like the Wichita State uh, Shocker cheerleaders come out, and they've had all these different people come out and it's been broadcast live uh, for 10 years, and one year it won an Emmy. And just for a small rural town like Ashland out in southwest Kansas that most people don't drive to, this is huge what they do to raise money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and to have Mulvane come out and be able to play. It's a huge honor to be asked. Clicker also has very good expectations for the band and drumline this year. They, they are a solid drum line. They have a huge tradition here at Mulvane for uh, rallying pep rallies, being very popular among the student body. But my expectation from this year is to go outside of the box, reach for some things they don't normally do, try different things. Um, don't get stuck in a rut, the same cadences we always play and do, to, to venture off and, and to be able to do a wide range of things and not just get stuck in one, one little area throughout the year. The goals for my uh, high school band this year is number one for them to always to have fun creating and performing and to be able to come into my room and know that it's a safe space to to create and do some things that you know they don't normally get to do throughout the day and at the same time become very well-rounded musicians and learn how to to, to work together as a group and, and to support one another. That's my biggest goal. It's not so much that every note needs to be played right. It's that we come together and, and they, they work together as a team and they can take that same attitude out among the school and the community, whatever else they're doing throughout the year. Mulvane will have the privilege to have a band day this year. Band day, that's, a, that's an awesome thing that came about towards the end of last school year and through the summer. The Mulvane Community Foundation decided they wanted to dedicate a day that was just for um, just for the bands in the Mulvane community, and they um, named it the Ted Powers Band Day, which Ted Powers was a band director in Mulvane that many of our teachers had when they were in school here, and he taught from the mid-50s to the kind of the late 1990s, I believe, and then went off and served in the House of Representatives. He's a well-beloved, well-known man in Mulvane, and, um, you know, people have much 
high regard for him. And so they kind of did this event around him, but it's to support and to attract attention to our middle school and high school bands, drum lines, color guard. They even had us uh, come out um, last night at a city council meeting and they did a proclamation and set that day as band day for Mulvane. So it was pretty awesome. Each year, Mr. Clicker and his band play so many songs. So I asked him which one was his favorite. I like our school song. I mean, I'm all Mulvane wrapped up in Mulvane. I love everything about it. And so when you hear that school song, it just kind of gives you goosebumps because you watch people get up to their feet. It means a lot to people that love tradition in Mulvane. And, and it, it says something about our community and the support they have for the band. So I guess I would have to say the school song. As you can see, the Mulvane High School Band has a lot of things planned for this year. That's all for me, Andrew Burgos, KCAT News. Sean Neptune sat down with Stuco President Abby McGowan about next week's homecoming themes. Thanks, Emma. With next week being homecoming, Stuco President Abby McGowan wanted to take a moment to announce what next week's themes are. Hey guys, I'm Abby McGowan and I'm your student body president here at MHS. Um, I'm super excited to tell you about next week's homecoming week. Monday we have mismatch and that's just wear something crazy and you can do whatever you want really with it. And then Tuesday is beach wear, so you gotta get, like you're going to the beach and got, get some shorts and a beach hat or whatever you want. Um, Wednesday is pajama day, so you can just wake up, come to school, and call it good. And then Thursday is cowboy cowgirl day, and that's an interesting one, so. <laughs> and then Friday is, of course, green and white, and so it'll be fun on the traveling pep assembly to support your school and everything, so yeah participate. <laughs> now that you know what's up with next week's theme, remember to wear your mismatched clothes on Monday and remember, the more people in your class to participate, the more NBC points that will be rewarded. Sean Neptune, KCAT News. This week on Gabe's Game Recap, Gabe Daniel will be giving us a recap on sports that happened this past week. Thanks, Chayton. The soccer teams were in action in Valley Center on September 13th. Varsity fell to the Hornets 10 0. The JV also fell 5 0. Then on September 18th, they hosted the McPherson Bull Pups. On the varsity side, the Cats fell 10 0. Then JV fell 1 0. The JV volleyball team was in action over the weekend in a tournament in Andover. The Cats ended up falling to Andover Central, Heston, and Derby in two sets. Then on September 18th, the volleyball teams were in action in Clearwater against Rose Hill and Clearwater. The varsity team fell to the Rockets and Indians in two sets. Then JV won against Rose Hill in two sets, then fell to Clearwater in two sets. On September 17th, the golf team had a tournament in Cheney. Taylor Ingram shot a 110 and Maddie Ewing shot a 122. Then the cross country team was running at the Circle Invitational on September 15th. Meddling on the girls' side was Anna Moon in 4th place, Josie Russell in 6th place, Caitlin Frieden in 8th place, and then Cameron Nolan in 24th place. Then on the boys' varsity side, Ryan Roderick meddled in 16th place, and Justice Kidd meddled in 20th place. And as we go to the JV boys' side, Victor Salazar was leading the Cats in 1st place, with Donovan Malone right behind in 2nd, Nash Brill in 5th, J.D. Titus in 14th, and Connor Hurley in 18th place. Last Friday, the varsity football team traveled to Collegiate, falling to the Spartans 42-22. Touchdowns came from Cole Diffenbaugh, Gage Milan, and Cole Schmidt. However, the JV team ended up beating the Spartans 36-24. Tonight, the Cats are looking to bounce back as they travel to Bueller to play the Crusaders. That's it for this week's edition of Gabe's Game Recap. Gabe Daniel, KCAT News. The Kansas State Fair is a prominent event that takes place every year. This year, a select few groups from the high school were able to go. Trey Abasolo will be giving us details. Last week, FFA went to the Kansas State Fair, where they enjoyed several activities, such as birthing a baby calf. Callie Humble placed 7th, and Karsten Nolan placed 11th out of about 400 students. I caught up with Mrs. Banzit and a couple of FFA members to see how they enjoyed the fair. Um, it just showed all the new FFA members, all the things that they could do during the year. Um, if they went to the FFA building, they actually could go through it and look at the different exhibits and see what other FFA members from other chapters have done and get ideas from that so they could, could do that here. Well, you can show 
you can show cows, you can show swine, you can do um, like a presentation, like a project, whether it was with um, agronomy, which is seeds, or there's a couple other things that you can do. So I'm hoping this year I took all of my classes, um, but next year I might just take FFA. So I look forward to trips every year, all the time. Because my family's always been around agriculture, and I just fit, like I've always wanted to be in it, so I figured it'd be a good opportunity for me. Um, I did it because I was in one of the classes, and Callie told me it'd be a great idea, so I did it. We got to teach the kids a lot because most of them had never seen like a cow before, and you could tell. And it was just really fun, and I just love getting to teach all the little kids. Um, we're going to Indiana in October, and I'm really excited for that. And then we're going to a bunch of competitions, and I'm just excited for all of it. The State Fair was a great learning experience for the students, and they seem to have had a lot of fun. That's it for me, Trey Abasolo, KCAT News. That's a ton of stuff that happened this week. Also today, everyone wore blue to support the Wichita deputy that had recently passed. Don't forget to like and subscribe at KCAT News on YouTube and at Real KCAT News on Twitter. Today, the varsity football team is heading out to Bueller to go against the Crusaders. Next week is homecoming, so don't forget to dress up to win some MVC points for your class. And join us next Friday at homecoming game against Coffeyville at the football stadium. Thanks for watching KCAT. <laughs> Thanks for watching K-Cat! Thanks, Thanks for, for watching K-Cat! Thanks for watching K-Cat!